Greetings and welcome to a Wednesday edition of the Shotgun Start. It is November 20th. Andy, how are we doing? Brendan, I'm doing great. I, You know, I was a little tired. I was driving today and uh, driving through the country. Really yeah. obscure parts of the country, I will say. And uh, and then I log in, finally have some good internet, log in, and uh, I see you're, you're wearing like basically the same outfit as me. Almost the same outfit. A little Andy hoodie. Andy hoodie Wednesday. It might be a few of those left in the shop. What a segue here. I believe it is the Black Friday sale. Oh, wow. What a Because Black Friday doesn't exist in 24 hours anymore. It's a, it's a two-month affair. Uh, we have Club we're, TFE we're members. We're part of the problem. We're part of well, the problem. Club TFE members, I think. I, I don't know the specifics. Just go to proshop.thefriedegg.com. And uh, Club TFE members have early access to our Black Friday sale. I think it's DJ a good deal. It's usually percent. a good deal. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> what amazing specifics here. I'm telling you to find the Pro Shop link. You're telling people it's probably a good deal. Usually it's a good deal. You know what? Some percentage off. The um, <laughs> What I'm disappointed in, that we it's not even a Friday. We didn't even pick a Friday. In November, we just picked a nondescript middle of the week day, Tuesday, a Tuesday to launch this. Can we? Well, it's Black Tuesday. We're striving to always provide more value for our club TFE members. Always striving, always learning, well, always efforting. Uh, and here's jump. one way. Here's one way. A little extra discount, a little early, ahead of the masses. Uh, on not Black Friday pro- proper, but I suppose Black Friday week proper. I, I don't know. I can't keep track anymore. Um, also, a value to those members. We're just doing uh, fried egg business here at the top. Yeah, you get access to a few more events. And I got to say, we rolled out pretty nice, nice and tidy, uh, hefty event lineup. Uh, yesterday announced it, but they're not open yet. They will be open on a rolling basis over the next few months. But uh, Club TFE members certainly get access to uh, a few primo spots. Hey, PJ, just based off of not based maybe off of even golf courses, just based off of where they are, which which event would you most want to go to? Where they are in time of year? No, not even not based off the golf course. Uh, I would I would want to do the Northern Michigan event because I lived in Michigan for three years and never actually made it up there. So I feel like I need to do that at some point. And those are Kingsley can... and Belvedere. Yeah. Belvedere to be specific. Okay. I think you can you fly you can fly direct from New York. To, to Travers? Where? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Look at that. Cherry Capital no or I think it's Cherry Capital Airport. I would miss right. the greatest the greatest airport in the world though, DTW. So I don't know if it's really worth that. Uh, we you released can those events. Connect in with Delta. You can you can do the connector there. Plenty of uh, Club TFE specific events like Mountain Lake, Florida. Um, Brendan, maybe, which event do you want to go to most? A member guest on Long Island somewhere. A lot of Club TFE specialty events. Also a lot open to the public. One that's open to the public that I would like to go to. Is in Bermuda. Oh, Bur- I want to go. Bermuda boy. Island I've boy. Been, I've been to the Kutsia zone. I want to go to the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, we have a mid-ocean club. I believe that's a uh, nice little golf course in the middle of the ocean. We also have Port Royal, the home of Brendan Todd, where Brendan Todd refound Butterfield his, home. Refound his swain. Uh, started making hay once again in his rightful place. Uh, but yeah, that looks like a good one. Apparently, like, no BS... Member people out there said like August is uh, you would think it might be a sweat box, but apparently this is, you know, verify it. Do your own research. I'm not suggesting to trust me on the but this we were told by regulars out there that it is uh, breezy and very nice. Uh, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Full full events are on our socials and email uh, newsletter and all that stuff. But we'll start rolling those out uh, to everyone over the next uh, few months. Um, why don't I begin with an interesting little factoid? This comes from listener Dave Ledwig. Um, in Boston today, or I guess it would have been yesterday, November 18th, 
Dr. George F. Grant officially got recognized with his own day. I thought this was interesting. Golf Nuts, listen to this. You might be interested in the story of George F. Grant. He's the son of freed slaves. George Grant moved to Boston, becoming a dental assistant, a graduate of the founding class of Harvard Dental School in 1870, the first African-American faculty member at Harvard, prominent Boston area dentist, and recognized expert in treating patients and instructing students with cleft palate treatments. Pretty brilliant guy. What does this have to do with golf? Already very credentialed and accomplished. Then, at his property in Arlington Heights, Massachusetts, Dr. George F. Grant developed the first golf tee on December 12, 1899. He received U.S. patent number 638920 for this invention. In 1991, he was officially recognized by the USGA. He was the inventor of the first golf tee. So he got his own day in Boston yesterday, November 18th. Dr. George Grant, inventor of the golf tee. Listen, America, baby. There are a lot of people that have a great rollback solution. Get rid of teas. <laughs> I've we heard that one. We cannot do this to Dr. George Grant. <laughs> I've heard that one before. Uh, now, especially on. now that he has a day. Now we that can't he has do day. that. No, I thought that was just a nice little odds and ends factoid to start our uh, Wednesday episode. Now let's go to, uh, I support, suppose, more uh, press, pressing matters of the day. Hey, is it? Is this really happening? Like, was what? is there really a player uprising against slow play? Do we live? Is this a no? Is this it actually happening? Are They're we doing witnessing? It for the impressions. Are we witnessing? You, this is something I never believed in a million years would happen. I think it's I think it's easier to throw a couple quotes to the media and at the press conference dais for many of them than it is to actually enforce and speed up. Now, the ones speaking out are probably not the snails themselves and are frustrated with it themselves, but uh, they're just one link in the chain and they can't, unfortunately, uh, impact widespread changes on their own. Uh, you're referring, of course, to Lucas Glover, Charlie Hull. Nelly comments Corda. comments on Sunday. Nelly Corda now speaking again today at the uh, CME. Lexi? Globe. Lexi said it? I think so. As I saw the headline. Huh. That'd be interesting. Um, yeah, well, Nelly, I guess Nelly she's, she's... and Lexi blast. Uh, Slow play. Lexi's leaving the stage now. She's got a yeah. She maybe she could do some sort of emeritus role of, of impacting change from beyond. Um, PGA Tour has affected changes. They're reducing fields. This has been voted on by the board meeting that, that took place at RSM, and I assume mostly remote because I don't think a lot of guys are at RSM that are on that board. Uh, on Monday, they voted. You, I don't know how they voted, not unanimously, but they voted. This is from multiple reports. Rex Hoggard among one of them. Monday's meeting of the board was dominated by the plan that had been proposed by the Player Advisory Council to reduce field sizes at nearly every tour event and cut the number of fully exempt players from 125, previously 125 down to 100. So less cards. Quote from Jay Monahan in a statement. Today's announced changes build on the competitive and schedule enhancement incorporated over the last six years in seeking the best version of the PGA Tour for our, who? Members. Fans. Fans. Players. Tournaments. And partners. Fans, Fans first. Fans won. Fan first initiative. This must be uh, a new thing. Fan yeah. first initiative. This was a true collaborative effort. Ah, I think people would quibble with the word collaborative there. Uh, Lucas Glover, maybe being one of them, might not be the word that they would use. I trust that they tried to collaborate and seek other voices, but I don't know that everyone would agree with that term. This was a true collaborative effort, and I'm extremely proud of the pack for the effort they put into evaluating how we build a stronger PGA Tour. This one from Tyler Dennis, the two first names, executive of the PGA Tour. It was important to redefine PGA Tour membership as we build on the aspirational nature of earning a PGA Tour card. So, I mean, that's just a fancier way to say we need to be more cutthroat. Redefine the PGA Tour membership. So we build on the aspirational nature of earning a PGA Tour card. Once on tour, members will have an equitable opportunity to retain their membership and qualify for the FedEx Cup playoffs. So this is what we expected. 
going 125 to 100 cards, 144 fields going down to 120 in a lot of places, including the Players Championship. 156 going to 144 in most places. Uh, 30 to 20 KFT, just it's passed through. We'd kind of heard this was coming. Lucas Glover taking umbrage, umbrage with this vote going through with Adam Shupak, the mule whisperer, as he's known in some quarters. Uh, I don't think Lucas is a mule. I, right? I, I was going to ask, is he actually the king, the king of the mules? Guy, guy won a U.S. Open. He's a flusher, all-time flusher. Well, <laughs> I don't know. He's a voice for the mules. Maybe he's a reach across the aisle guy. I don't know. You know what makes me think think he might be the king mule? Is that he after winning his second event in a row, he rode that six a.m. coach flight out of Memphis <laughs> at six a.m. when he when he had just sweat out like seventy five gallons of of water out of his body. And made like ten million dollars in three weeks. Yeah, and he and he he, he didn't move his flight back. A eh? like he didn't move his flight back. Didn't pay for to move the flight back. Or B decided to do do a little chart jet charter or split a jet charter with some of his friends because maybe he is just the the king mule. Economy plus? No? You want to be an A1 through 15 on Southwest? Was, no? Think, I'm going to just be regular. I think he was, yeah. Oh, God. Unbelievable. So here's what he said to Adam Shupak. I think it's terrible. And then hiding behind pace of play? I think challenges our intelligence. They think we're stupid. I'd like to know who he's referring to with the they. Such a nice catch-all term to, uh, you know, I don't know point the figure at someone not specifically they think we're stupid glover contends that 20 years ago when he was starting on tour there were no more than a handful of slow players now quote we have 50 so don't cut fields because it's a pace of play issue tell us to play faster or just saying you're trying to appease six guys and make them happy so don't so they don't go somewhere else and play golf i'll say that's a howitzer of a quote i like that mm-hmm. quote I wish you would have gone more specific on what, who six, which six. Which right? six would you would you say? What I would mean, be if you had to guess six? Who would you guess? Xander Cantlay, like that kind Scotty. of player. Scotty, I Rory. guess. Yeah, yeah, those kinds of players. I don't want to just. I mean, you don't want. I don't just, think he knew for you sure. Don't I think make, he's thinking pack make assumptions. Members. No, I think he's saying pack members. You know I who I that, think it. I, you think uh, you know who I think ha- helps. Webb Simpson. Yeah, Adam Scott. Mm-hmm. You think Lu- Lucas Glover, if he plays great for Atlanta Drive, will will garner some sponsors exemptions? He may. Of note, this week I noticed Justin Rose on the very bubble bubble sixtieth, just not playing. And I figure if he drops out, right, he's just gonna get. Uh, Morgan Stanley, you know, these sponsors, he plays the brand game better. Than He's just not worried about getting, getting out of Siggy events, I guess. Well, let um, me tell you something. I, an astute listener pointed out the lyrics of a great song, Boys of Summer. And I'd say Justin Rose is a Boys of Summer. He's a boy of summer. Doesn't do and this fall. isn't, this isn't the season of the Boys of Summer. Okay. You're going to get us DMCA'd <laughs> off the universe. PJ's pulling his hair out, literally. <laughs> the boys I can't, I can't put that YouTube in. YouTube is going to I can't put, just, I can't put that YouTube's in. YouTube's going to blast us off. I don't want to piss off Don Henley. I don't want to <laughs> piss off Don Henley. The very, very low on my list of people that I want to poke. I don't want to poke Don Henley. I can't. I, we can't put that in. We can't put that in. You'll have to imagine it. Daniel Powder. Daniel we already Daniel. did that. Make <laughs> this off, but not Don Henley. Don Henley's a bridge too far. Hey, this is a real <laughs> Glover quote. Right? I mean, look, I think there's competing interests here. The tour has to get, like the tour isn't a super compelling product here. You know, the guys from 100 to 125 aren't probably bringing home the bacon. But like, they're sort of insane. We're making all these changes and putting under the veil of a pace of play issue. There is a pace of play issue. Is this the way to solve it? Yeah. 
<laughs> no, or is this just it's six not. guys and some pack, powerful pack guys saying this is how we do it? You know how else we could solve it? Seems like these multi-venue events, though, like Sea Island, we got two. Should we just start playing the players? Keep it at 144, go to the Valley course, and do the stadium course. Maybe that's how we solve it, instead of just cutting membership. Just do more multi-venue events. I it's, propose it's, this on the fried egg. I kind of am starting to come around to the idea that there's the, t- the tour should get just way bigger. There should be a thousand members. Okay. And... You just, they just, it's just, they play up and down all the time. Relegations every week. And like, you're either in the top 50 and you know, you can play wherever you want or you deal with where you fall it's in the order. In the ocean. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, f- if you, you make it, so maybe it's 41 to a thousand are all playing week to week, depending on what, and, and if they complain, play better, play better. If you want to take a week off, you're going to deal with falling down. You're going to go down in the rankings. Uh, Matt Fitzpatrick, who just seems to be pissed off at the PGA Tour ever since he didn't get his cracked uh, driver three-wood ruling in Colorado, said of Lucas Glover's comments, he's so right, pathetic. That pace of play is spoke about every year and nothing ever gets done. So he piled on. I thought Lucas Glover's comments were kind of insightful. Smart yes. guy. I don't know that, like, necessarily offered a solution, but I think he just, maybe the solution is to maintain the status quo. Gary Young had some interesting, Uh, I would say, quotes in rebuttal or or just uh, explication with Adam Schupat. Great guy, Gary Young. Nice guy. Former Friday Golf Podcast guest. That Uh, being said, I don't think we view view the world of pro golf the same way, and it was evident when we podcasted. Senior Vice President of Rules and Competition. Will reduce field sizes help the pace of play? Absolutely, it will, he said. It's something we've been saying for years that 156-man fields are too many players. It's basically 78 players in a wave, 13 groups per side, and our pace of play is set somewhere around four and a half hours. You do the math, and the play in time part, which is basically two hours and 15 minutes, they'll make the turn, and all of a sudden, the group ahead of them is walking off the tee because there's two hours and 12 minutes of tee times. It becomes a parking lot. There's nowhere to go. Maybe we adjust time part. Maybe we just... Maybe we change. I, I get 156. Fine. Maybe you've maxed out there. Um, can, can I uh, interject here? Yeah. So um, there were some, uh, some boys from across the pond at this event that I was at this week, the Renaissance Cup. Mm-hmm. They had the first tee time at Piners number four today. So the starter's doing his normal spiel. And I wouldn't said, say Pinehurst is really a. This is, I think I think this is indicative pace. of the PGA Tour. Okay. It's probably related, you know. This is probably about what the PGA Tour's time pars around. So was so there some got, culture shock? So the starter goes, and we you know the first group out. We'd love you. We'd love you to set a good pace today. Um, we expect you to be back in four hours and twenty minutes. And one of one of the boys from over the pond scoffed. It's oh. four hours and twenty minutes. I hope I'm back by that. <laughs> he said, "You won't well, have not. to worry about us." It's not and always up to you. The At starter. The, the starter goes. We hear that every day. I hear that every day. Well, I'll see it. I, he said something along the lines of, "I'll I'll believe it when I see it." The foursome from across the pond. Guess what they finished their round in? Four fifteen. Four fifteen. Four twenty-five. Four. Oh, I I thought. So four thirty. Four thirty. Four thirty. They were the first group off. Oh, first group off. Sorry, I thought they got first caught group, in the caught in the first wash. Group, first okay. group. Oh, off. all right, all right. Um, uh, three fifteen then. Three, three, three. Two thirty. All right, love it, love it. Now, wait, wait, wait. The guy said four twenty. Yes, for the first group. Yes. I'm sorry, I missed that detail. Yes. Holy shit! That's what they expected. I thought you meant <laughs> like twelve thirty in the afternoon or something. You're just in the wash of. All right, uh-huh. okay, all right. Four hours right. and thirty minutes. So guess what? You know, if you set a time, a, a, an expectation that four thirty is fast, four thirty. Yeah. 
Yeah. What? Yeah. The problem with the tour is they've set this time part that's so slow that naturally people go above the time par. The time par has to be like, and they don't enforce the rules. Yeah. The no, time they don't par, at all. The time par has to be aggressive. Hey, can we talk about that enforcement for a second? Pretty, pretty, uh, veiled down quiet part out loud quote from Gary Young said, quote, you'd have to be somewhat crazy or not paying attention to ever reach the final stage of like a warning of the actual penalty. Like it's basically, it's a system designed to not actually penalize you, right? When he says you'd have to be somewhat crazy or not paying attention to ever re that, reach that final stage, which means like, the stage where you're about to actually get penalized after a warning. That's crazy. That is such a like veils off comment from the head of like, you have to be crazy essentially to, to, to incur a real slow pay, slow play penalty on our tour. Kind of ridiculous. It's a tour of gentlemen. Uh, I did think he admitted that he's kind of powerless in this whole thing. Why is that funny? Bad time for a sip. He says, unless they change the amazing. He's basically, it's he's amazing. He's a rule. There are rules official. He's a rules official. Well, he totally and I'm powerless. Punted. I can't make a call. A, you have to be crazy to ever actually get to the second warning. And then he says, unless they change the structure of the process, which is a four tiered process, no, that nobody will incur play penalties. The players themselves, so again, sort of. Punting any authority or enforcement ability, the players themselves want to make a serious change to it and want to visit moving to a penalty chase sooner. It's their organization. So I'm just here. I'm just here so we don't get fined. It's their organization. We certainly would implement it if that's something they want to put into effect. But we're not there right now. So a lot of they's in this, you know, whether it's Lucas Glover talking about they think we're stupid. Here's Gary Yon essentially saying, I'm not, a, I, I'm just here. I'm just, I have a title. I kind of oversee some things. Occasionally we'll call, call, come in and call heads or tails on a subject. But he's just saying the players themselves want to make a change. It's their organization. We would certainly implement it if that's something they want to put into effect. So he can't do anything to impact change. And I, I'm not, I almost, I'm not criticizing him. I have empathy for him. Can't do anything. I mean, like, think about any other sport if the, if the referees had to operate in this space where, where the players were their bosses. I mean, it wouldn't work. The NFL just designed this crazy harebrained new kickoff in like a meeting in the offseason. They say, you know, special teams coaches figure it out. Figure out how to use play with this. It's just over the top enforcement. Do you want to hear a crazy unsubstantiated rumor? I would love to hear that. Did you see that video of, of the golf club that got stolen last week that went no. around? No. Like it happened at like a club or something. Somebody just, some guy just went in, stole, took a putter out of a bag. Bag room or something like that? No, no. It was like a bag on a cart. Okay. <laughs> like walked away. Yeah. Unsubstantiated rumor. That person that stole the butter was Tim Donahue. <laughs> yeah, this is very, uns <laughs> for legal reasons. I, I hope we didn't like accuse this man of larceny. Highly unsubstantiated. Highly Let's unsubstanti say his character has already sort of been established. <laughs> what a random story. I haven't even seen that, the original story on that one. I'll oh. try and find it. But it's, it's an unsubstantiated rumor. And to further, apparently the, the putter in question that was stolen was a lab putter. Okay. I've heard Alle about that. Allegedly... He already had a lab putter in his bag. <laughs> what a ridiculous unsubstantiated <laughs> rumor with like specific detail, random sort of connections. What a ridiculous one. Uh, that's good.
Uh, anything further on Glover and or the tour changes we all expected to be coming? Not I mean, really. Not, I, I think like, I think this had like something had to change. It's a right? tough one. I see multiple sides or mul- yeah. Yeah. Like something had to change. And this is this is what you know, they chose to go this direction. And I think do I think like the tour being more cutthroat, I think is good for the product. Like the relegation is going to be more sub- more severe. There's going to be more big time players that are on the edge of making it or not making it. And I think that's good for the product. Right. But I think the product the is thing, a priority. Why saying 120 guys playing five and a half hours instead of 144? That seems more that's directly it's terrible. addressing the product. But I, I just think like when you think about the tour, the the very elite top of the tour should be hard to get to, and mm-hmm. easy to get get knocked out of. Hmm. Does I, that make sense? It, yeah. Some guys might like, not like to hear that. So it hard to get to, easy to get knocked out of. That and, feels like sort of, can both those things coexist? Yeah. Because if you're really good, you're going to stay up. Okay. Right? Okay. Like, and so if it's hard to get to, easy to get knocked out of, then you could ha- create this like big pool of players that can go up and down. My issue is making it smaller but not not thinking about making more innovative and more free flowing passage points in up if that makes sense yeah yeah like to me to that's that. where they miss the boat on it is like make it small but make it smaller okay but let's talk about like how we're going to get players up and down because then you're not going to have the mules all upset cuz they're going to see like Okay, this is how I get up and down. If I get hot, I'm going to get up there. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, Eric Cole has proven that sort of, right? He became a bona fide signature player all year. He was a minor league golf tour player. Graserman's a great example. Graceman. Yeah, I think it's possible. Um, Yeah, it's interesting. One way, I hope you don't miss the boat, though, Andy, is by go, not by forgetting, I should say. What a segue to go to redroostergolf.com where I'm told it's Black Friday month, Black Friday all month long. Now, I, you know, they're sponsor, they're friends of us. I got to push back on this. This is an oxymoron. It's either Black Friday or it's not. You can't say it's Black Friday all month long. As much as I like them, as much as Why I Why not? Why can't you say that? Cuz it's a day. It's a day. It's either a day or it's not. It's it's Black Month, Black Friday. We already have a Black History Month. I don't want to infringe on that. It's Black Friday all month long. We're just bending the 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 definition of time. Every day is Black Friday What's for commercial wrong with that? for commercial reasons. Either way, the deals are hot. November twentieth to twenty sixth, free shipping all week. Perfect time to load up on accessories or their award winning gloves. My Golf Spy. Uh, several others gave him top glo- top glove. This is their these are their uh you know bread and butter. Former players, maybe current players still, maybe still out there looking to move their way up. Some of those pathways Andy talked about, Brad Fritch and others. Uh, but this is what they focus on gloves. But they have other accessories, so they have free shipping all week from the twentieth to the twenty sixth. Then then November twenty seventh to December third. Backed by top popular demand. God. Mystery three glove pack returns for a limited time. Get three mystery Cabretta leather gloves at 33% off. Perfect to gift or treat for yourself. Also, we have our code, exclusive code, FRIEDEGG50. You buy one glove, you get another glove 50% off. That's FRIEDEGG50. So they've got the mystery glove, three glove pack next uh, two weeks from now. Free shipping all next week, 20th through the 26th. I guess that's this week, you know, in, going into Thanksgiving and starting Black Friday. It's the three glove pack. Go to redroostergolf.com. Use the promo code FRIEDEGG50 for that buy one, get 50% off. Thanks to them 
for their continued support. One other nugget coming out of the board meeting on uh, Monday was an Eamon Lynch report that budget cuts are coming. You know, this is November talking status and we're talking budget cuts. This is what pro golf is in the month of November. This is from Eamon's article. On the agenda was tens of millions of dollars of budget cuts, what private equity likes to call, quote, efficiencies. Addressing bloat and waste is a long overdue exercise in this organization, but many of those who work at the GLOHO, which I guess is his shorthand for <laughs> global like home, deserve more defenders than they'll see when the ax starts swinging. The operations and culture of the tour, a mix of competence, complacency, and conceit. I would agree with that. A little bit of competence, a lot of conceit, some complacency, good mixture. It's sometimes hard to you know separate them out in the strainer. Depending on who you're dealing with, is overdue a shakeup. But people have done a good job will still be hurt. Cuts ought to be with a scalpel to safeguard talent, growth, and revenue. But those decisions are now heavily influenced by folks accustomed to using chainsaws who have a great deal of experience in sports, but not in golf. So this is the SSG coming in to uh, create more efficient operation well, at the Gloho. There's two ways. There's two ways to uh, to make a make a place more efficient: spend less money or bring more revenue in. And I like, don't, I don't know I don't know with with declining viewership and you know maxed out tournaments that they have I don't know where the revenue increases without some bigger ideas and you know maybe unification of the game I mean this is the most obvious red meat vote for a player for a pack they're gonna be like oh. We're just going to like clean out some offices in the Gloho? Yes. Okay. Cuz SG SSG wants us to do it. I mean, it, yeah, that was always going to get approved. Let's cut some costs. Uh, we'll see how significant that is. Tens of millions of dollars according to Amen of budget cuts are coming to the pond. Tens of road. millions. Allegedly. Per year? I don't know. Maybe lifetime. I don't know. It says tens of millions of dollars of budget cuts. Maybe more uh, broadcasting from windowless rooms instead of on site. I don't know. There's all sorts of ways you could trim the fat. That's where, where Zinger will be. Zinger will be in the in the cave. He won't be on on foot. That's right. I checked in on the uh, on the auction today just to see where where oh, we're at on on some bids. There's some motion on some Zinger items. I, you'd have to think that our <laughs> well, you've, our them forty, to the yeah, our forty minute advertisement for them on Friday <laughs> was, uh, you know, it's all good. We're ending human trafficking, so I'm glad. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that they're getting bid on. That's good. I'm glad there's some movement. Anyone, anyone particularly hot? Is there anything that's uh, like really striking a chord? Well, I I went straight to the uh, the canvas oil painting of him and Faldo in front of the Valhalla Clubhouse. <laughs> uh, still no bids at forty dollar opener. So what? Uh, I I I would be lying if I said I wasn't moderately intrigued there. Oh, that be that be a must have for any office. So, oh, uh, a, a nice painting. Oh man, did Paul Waring delete his tweet? It's, oh my god he said what? i love the pg oh here's what he said paul waring tweet we're at the hard left turn from zayner paul waring minute are we doing paul dp waring, world waring. tour will always be my home and family they mean the world to me to all my friends family support staff and sponsors thank you and he says pga tour baby five exclamation points I mean, it sounds as it's a Cleveland once Indians now Guardians fan. Like all the guys who went to Boston and New York. This I love this place. Means the world to me. But New York, baby, Boston, baby. I'm off to see the million. Like I don't know how you argue. Like obviously loves the European tour. And then how do you not call yourself a feeder tour? This is a guy who's literally died in the wool Euro tour. He goes PJ tour, baby. I love you, DP World Tour. But I'm out. Peace. It's an interesting, interesting tweet. Uh, I'm not suggesting there's any criticism uh, that should be levied his way, but it's it's sort of the writings on the wall. I'll say this, Andy. We're getting 10 guys, Paul Waring, McKibben, Little Hollywood, come into the PGA Tour, going to the DP World Tour Who's, for who multiple are we reports, reinstated 
Sergio Garcia, Tyrrell Hatton, John Rahm, Adrian Maruk, Mean Dean Burmeester, Joaquin Neiman, Thomas oh, Peters, Patrick Dean. Reed, and Lucas Herbert have all taken up membership on the DP World Tour in 2025. So this means I think Sergio has paid his fines, fully reinstated. How how just convoluted is all this, though, Andy? Like the disjointed nature of professional golf. The DP World Tour is sending us, you know, Thirsty Boy, Paul Waring, Rasmus. Then you got these live outcasts who are not allowed to show their faces at PGA Tour events popping up. I'd say this might be a good trade for the DP World Tour if we're doing a one-to-one exchange. I don't think that's it's not necessarily how it works, but they're getting Rom and Sergio and Hatton. Mean Dean, of course, Neiman Mean, and Peters. I, I, is it's just Dean, a convoluted mess right now. Is Mean Dean a top 20 player in the world right now? Uh, top 15, maybe. I mean, <laughs> we have to see how he does outside the team element. It really seems to be thriving. <laughs> thriving. In this yeah, that whole thing. Might be a different world out there. Do you think he him. could earn captaincy and equity in the Stingers? He should. Guys, he was more bought in than anybody. <laughs> so anyways, I thought that was just an interesting juxtaposition that illustrates how sort of messed up we are right now with where people are allowed to play, where people are want to play, where people are being promoted into to play. And uh, that's where the PGA Tour will be slightly. Could If we wanted to like lay out the groundwork for how the European Tour could not become not be a feeder tour. Obviously, step one all starts with money, but getting money right out of the gate, that's not a realistic thing. Like people are just going to sponsors are just going to pay more money right now. Yeah. Is the is the way it happens is that the U.S. tour becomes super small. Smaller fields, less events. Yielding more schedule, more available schedule time where they could have a more compelling event, and the the merger deal not happening, so that they have this this group of live players and they could start to plot a schedule that allows them to earn world ranking points in like in great tournaments and potentially also have some. Americans uh, like Billy Horschel or, you know, uh, or uh, Rory McIlroy or like PGA, not, you know, Rory's obviously not American, but like a, a, those players play over and you see like interesting events. Is that the roadmap to them regaining a slight, you know, a little bit of a bump in stature? Um, I think it's a roadmap. I don't know if it's the one that'll work. It sounds full of like potholes and like, yeah, I get it. It's a very uphill climb. It's, it's, it's an outline though, that you set, set out. I mean, the merger's probably going to happen. That seems, seems like it's very, both sides are, should be motivated to make that happen. What um, if, what if the PIF just invests? In, in live just goes, keeps going on its way. Yeah. But the PGA tour rules and regulations still, sort of outlaw or, or prohibit those guys from playing on their tour. Yeah. Let's just um, say that. Yeah. Then I guess the, it creates a little better pathway. I like your thought about fewer events, fewer players, maybe opening up another more lane to run for the right? DP world tour. Yeah. Some of the, yeah. some of these people will just be like, well, like I'm not going to be in this field. I'm going to go play the DP world tour. Cause I need to play somewhere. I want to make money. I think they have an opportunity. Like you got to capture the base, and they, they don't. They they sometimes they they do the easy parts hard, like capturing the base. Like they just release their schedule, and it's terrible. <laughs> There's nothing. They had a chance. They have a chance to really own the fall, and you're going. I don't know. Maybe venues don't they, matter. They got K Club, like, right? Yeah, yeah. They, all it is is a Dunhill, and that's the week right after the Ryder Cup. It's really like the only, I mean, Wentworth will do fine. It's just sometimes they got to do some of the easy stuff better, in my opinion. But yeah, you, you lay out a potential roadmap. You do. You do. Uh, but they've, they're down Paul Waring for the moment. He's off and very excited about it. Um, you know who's also down? Joe Douglas. PJ, 
Can I just, before we get into Stripe here. I actually, I don't know if JD is down, truthfully. He might be uh, happy. I think, yeah. I think he might be okay. I think, I think he might be fine. Can I offer a, a radical, insane question? And, Please. And I don't want to defend it. I, I happen to be told I'm wrong. I think it's pr- pretty insane, but maybe recency bias hitting me here. But of the rooting interests of this podcast, is the team that's 2-8 and eight and paying Deshaun Watson $55 million guaranteed the most stable at the moment? I think so. I'd rather, I'm happy to be proven wrong. I honestly, based on all the shit I keep hearing, it sounds bad from both of you. I, I just. Well, I, 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 the Jets are the most unstable element in the world at the current given moment. It, you could split this atom 97,000 different ways and cause an explosion. I, 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 cause there's no quarterback, there's no coach, there's no GM, there's, who know the owner might be the ambassador of the United Kingdom again, TBD on that. Like they're at every level of the organization, there is nothing currently. Whereas, like, all right, at least you have Caleb. And then I Kevin I don't here, think Kevin's, I don't think I'm wor- I don't think the Bears are worse than the Jets. I don't, I don't think either. we're worse than the Browns either. Okay. All right. I'm scared. I'm scared about all that I'm hearing. Irreparable harms and things. Okay. All right. All right. I don't know. I'm Kevin Stefanski had to come out today and said he's not worried about being on the hot seat. Is Kevin Stefanski on the hot seat? I'd hire Kevin Stefanski. I the Bears can't though because he's too big of a name for Kevin Dude, Warren. Kevin Warren would be threatened. God, I read something today. Sports Illustrated made me click. You know, I've yeah. You know, I think we say we're we're idiots on this podcast. I think we've said many many things that are probably semi. Yeah, what an idiot. I mean, what? A, I mean, just stupid. You are quick on the trigger on that one. Uh, we're idiots, but I think we're semi-informed on a lot of this stuff. Could be aggregated here or there. I clicked on SI.com. That The headline said, the Browns, one, should they fire Kevin Stefanski, uh, NFL coach of the year, two of the last three years. So we're already jumping that hurdle right out of the gate. That's just, this is part of the article. Should they fire Kevin Stefanski? That's hurdle one. Two, they should definitely absolutely call Mike Tomlin and throw the sink at him. So that's hurdle why, two. Why would Mike Tomlin go to And Cleveland? I'm saying, why is this on SportsIllustrated.com? What is the substance here? Because apparently Brady Quinn just blurted it out on a podcast somewhere. Brady and, Quinn? Brady Quinn! And this is now an article. And we just, we need to put some guardrails up. We need what, to put some guardrails up. What was the uh remember remember the bowl game with Brady Quinn and was it AJ Hawk? Yeah. Yeah. And the sister. split jersey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whose sister Laura, was it? Laura. Laura Laura was, Quinn, I think was it was. Dating AJ Hawk. Yes, yes, I believe that's right. They're from the <laughs> okay. Dublin area in okay. uh in just... Columbus. Yeah. I <laughs> yes, that's an all timer. The split jersey is an all timer. I mean, yes, all timer. That was an all time moment. Also, all time moment was Mante Teo. <laughs> that Which whole part? thing, the whole the thing, whole, all of it. the all Alabama of it, all game of or the girlfriend issue, <laughs> the, all Lene of it. Kakua. Okay, that's it. Those are your whole. Points of reference for Notre Dame football last 30 years. Yeah. Tail and Honestly. the split jersey. Okay. Right? All what right. else was there? Other than them getting just completely blown out in football games. All right. All right. Um, we're so far off the rails. Anyways, that was an interesting one. Aggregation station. Fire Stefanski, hire Tomlin. Okay. I think he's doing all right for This is what qualifies. Um, yeah. All right, let's get back on schedule. We'll get to our schedule for the week here in a minute. But first, Andy, did you know about our good friends at Stripe? I am aware of our good friends at Stripe. I've used Stripe for years. This is what helped us start our business. This little podcast wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Stripe because they made it seamless for us to connect our website and start to accept payment. You know, you're you're not going to be a very good business, especially in the modern era, 
unless you can have ways to accept payments. And especially now with the way people pay online, they like to use a lot of different forms of pay- payment. That's where Stripe really comes in. They have an incredible checkout system that uh, accepts like virtually every form of payment possible. It's not everyone, but they virtually do more than, close. than like everybody else. And what that does is it means more people check out. You know, you want to reduce friction when people check out of your store. Like that, you want to ask them less questions. You want like the more things you, the more difficult you make it, the less likely people are going to get to check out. Uh, Stripe helps you make it really seamless. Whether you're doing a billing like that requires like a monthly subscription or a usage based subscription, they can do it all. Uh, if you want to learn more about Stripe, go to Stripe.com. Very nice. Very nice there, Andy. You can tell you've been using that product for a long time and, and provided frictionless uh, commerce for us. Um, all right, let's get to our schedule for the week. Let me just find it. On the PGA Tour, we have the RSM Classic, one of my favorite events. We've got sort of a, a doozy of a field down in uh, the, the Gold Niles, I believe they're called. Um, but first, there's some sort of contra- not con- mess of messaging. The tour is getting in on the Caitlin Clark thirst. Apparently, she is in the pro-am, maybe, but she was to caddy in some little putting charity deal on Wednesday, but they have barely messaged it. Nobody knows she's mi- like they've been done a poor job in leading up to it. She might, I'm told, join Zatch for oh nine God. holes of the actual Iowa, pro-am. Iowa. Nine holes of the actual pro am apparently, but they haven't really like the LPJ last week had you know three days of bonanza, and the, like the, some little RSM account uh, Instagrammed it that she might caddy in a, a like a charity putting contest, but it seems like she might be playing the pro am. So they're getting in on the thirst there. Uh, I'm told there may be another prominent uh, former quarterback also playing in the pro am on Wednesday. I'm not sure he'll who he would get. Uh, what kind of dignitary? Davis Love the Third also in the field. Maybe he he needs a. Pro- I don't know who he would. Uh, who this uh, prominent? This is former D- DL 3s home event. It is. He is in the field uh, at the RSM Class, and he's currently four thousand five hundred ninety seventh in the world. Andy, uh, he's had three made cuts in the last five years. Sixty uh, eighth at the twenty twenty one RSM Classic, sixty sixth at the twenty twenty API Bay Hill. And 51st at the 2020 Wyndham Championship. He is in the field. Um, he I guess on, on the course. I guess on a sliding scale, he's sort of a legend, more prominent than Jadon Blake and Billy Andre and done more more recently. But again, you know, that's three made cuts since 2020. That's almost five full seasons on the PGA Tour. Uh, but I get it. Local. Um, like runs to the island. Runs the island. Runs the island. I think also prominent they down there. should call it Love Island. Uh huh. Look at you. Also prominent down there is uh, I think Jonathan Bird, Jay Bird. Uh, he's seven hundred forty second in the world. Made twenty yeah. million on the PGA Tour. Uh, he's made ten thousand this year, which means he's probably not played very well. Six <laughs> twenty four cuts last year. Uh, we're putting him in the game within the game for Low Birdman. Birdman, Daddy, flying any weather. Flying Jonathan any. Bird versus Marcus Bird, a Monday qualifier. So oh. we have the low Birdman, former uh, Friday with golf Marcus portrait. Bird. Yes. So we have a bird game within the game. Jonathan Bird yeah, and like Marcus, Marcus Bird. Bird. Yeah, I think we're all we all would like to. See. Like Jonathan Bird's made twenty million. Let's go, Marcus. Game within the game. The uh, Birdman. Uh, elsewhere in the field, I mean, it's just. Look, I, I go to the inside the field document. And they have this italics note at the top. It says, note, colon, an additional year of eligibility was granted to some categories because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Like now, when you have to put this note at the top of your field list every week, we've had a full <laughs> presidential uh, term. term. We've elected two presidents in November since the pandemic. Uh, two elections and we're still putting this at the note of every field list like we just have to stop we have to stop it's like black friday going all month 
college still is unwinding this too. I, I feel know. like they're at the last year, well, right? Yeah, yeah. How you got some guys playing on six, seven, eight years of eligibility? Hey, how about this pairing? How about it? Pat and Kazire, Davis oh Thompson, God. and Harris English. Wow. Those are just three sort of lumbering, stretch four Georgia boys. <laughs> just rolled out there. Like, Add sort of like conveyor belt cookie cutter. Yeah. Like a very talented and all in their own right. Patton, Harris, and Davis. How about that? So Harrison, Harrison Davis that. played at, at Georgia. Pat and Auburn. Pat and Pat and Auburn. Right. Right. How about this group? DL3, Zatch. So two Ryder Cup captains. And then Jonathan, the bird man, Jonathan oh Bird. That that scans. That scans. I mean, hey, I would like. Go ahead. Do you do you want to do a little game within the game this week, just yeah. for fun? I already got gave you the bird one. What else? All right. Who you're? T- who are you taking? PJ, you could be in too. For birds? Yeah. I mean, I think we all want Marcus. Oh, well, we can all pick Marcus. I'm taking Marcus. Okay. I'm in on Marcus. All right, Patton, Davis, and Harris. PJ, go first. I think I'm going Harris. Home game. The home, home games for all home. home games. <laughs> I know, but I, I out of the, out of the three, I'm just leading wow. Harris English. PJ's probably been researching form finishes <laughs> yeah, for these right. guys. Like Last approach the green five, stats. Five well, you haven't, you haven't even gotten to the premier group of the entire tournament. Nico Minute is I, it? A, is it a great we'll pairing? Get, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, am I next? Do you want to go ahead? You got to pick yours. You All right, I'm taking the boys of fall. It's fall. I'm going to take Patton Kazire. Why would you All not? Right, I'm going to take Davis. Davis Thompson, probably one of the, the most sm- improved. Probably the smart play. Actually. No, Harris has been playing good. I feel All like right. this this fall. All right. What else? You um, got? Let's do. Uh, let's do our. This is good radio. Yeah. All right. The the young gun the guns and Paul Barjon. So we got Thor Bjornsson, Christo, the six foot nine, head scratching decision maker, and and Thor Bjornsson and Barjon. I'm gonna take Christo. Um, I also was gonna take Christo. I think this is this is fun. Sponsor exemption, Christo. All right, I'll take Thor. Thor. All right, Bubble Boys, the Bubble Boy Group: Jolie D, Wes Bryan, ZB, Zach Blair. Um, I think Wes Bryan playing well. I'll take Wes Bryan playing well. Loves to do well in the southeastern United States. Cleans up. I'll take Wes Bryan. I'm gonna take ZB. Okay. I'll go, Joel. I'll go, Joel. I'll round that out. I'm okay with that. All right. Echevarria. What's the Echevarria group? Uh, The number one JT on tour, JT Poston, and Brian Harmon. (laughs) Wow. It's a premier group for Nico. Swimming with the sharks. You know what? I, um... (sighs) I just don't know how like hundredth in every statistical category <laughs> is gonna play That's the just, island. You need to you need to wait for recent performance there, Andy. Come on. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Brian Harmon. All right. All right. Uh I gotta go Nico. Proud, proud the guy's hot. Nobody hotter in the world of golf than Nico. How could you go against him? For the sake of Monday's podcast, Nico Nico would be the best outcome, but I'm taking the postman here. All, All right. right. All right. Last one. Last one. This is a really fun, really fun grouping here for this podcast. You got Kelly Craft. Oh, my God. Tommy Ganey. Oh Tommy, two Tommy red Ganey's roosters. Tommy in the field? Ganey. <laughs> and the desert fox, Martin Laird. In the swamp. Desert Fox, Fox is far from the desert. Uh, I'll just let you guys have the... I'm going with the throwback machine. He's going to find that 60 <laughs> magic. He's going to put his two red roosters on and go out and shoot 60 again. I'm going Tommy Gaines. 
He's got the course record. <laughs> He's got the course record. That doesn't. That kind of magic just doesn't go away. Oh boy. Uh I'll go Kelly Craft. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's perfect. I'm, I'm going to take Kelly Craft too. Okay. Ludwig's the, playing, right? Ludwig, yes, this is his yeah, return after two yeah. months. Knee knee injury. His return after two months. He holds, I think, two fifty three. He holds the you know uh, seventy two hole record. The eighteen hole record is owned by Tommy Ganey, Bassie Munoz, Tyler McCumber, <laughs> and Mackenzie Hughes. Just a quartet that's <laughs> evidence that this event just shouldn't exist more than anything in the world. Just a bunch of guys <laughs> throwing up sixties, and you know everyone's just trying to get the Thanksgiving dinner. Um, that's, that's, that's your RSM classic elsewhere in the field. I just got it. We have to note it's, uh, we got to get through this here. It's, uh, 12 to three on Thursday, Friday, one to four on Saturday, Sunday, uh, real notables, Ludwig, Stewie Sink, Harris, English, Harmon, Mac Hughes, the course record holder, Kucher, Webb Simpson, the septic tank and Camilo Vajegas, uh, not notable. I mean, you got. Fratelli got in. Frugal won. He hasn't been. He's been in Europe and the world. He bounced in. It's just, I went through the whole list category. I could read the whole reshuffle category, like thirty-seven to forty-four, and it's just, it's an like with all the stakes on the line, it's tough. Uh, I do think it's interesting. It's an interesting event this week with the cutoffs for the top sixty, cutoffs for the top one twenty-five. Here's your like fifty-five. Yeah, we'll go 58 through 63. We go uh, Nick Taylor, Nico, 59, Justin Rose, 60. 61 is Kevin Yu. 62 is Lucas Glover, the uh, the outspoken one. Mark Hubbard, 63. Knapp, 64. Minwoo Lee is 65. He is playing in the Australian PGA, so Minwoo is not in it. So uh, Tom Kim, who's 57, Nick Taylor is 58, and Justin Rose are all not playing this week. So teetering on the signature bubble and not playing those three Tom Kim. I suppose he thinks he's going to be getting sponsors exemptions. No matter what, he's a global superstar. Um, That's right. And the top 125 bubble will go 120 skins, Valamaki, Ryder, ZB, Damon, West Bryan are your cut off to 125. Then right after that is Norlander, Berger, Springer, Pearson, Cootie, and SH Kim Valamaki. This is uh, an article by Brentley is the only one not playing. So, Alamaki. yeah, you, but he's 121, probably okay at 121. Uh, so, but you've got everybody. What do you think Sammy's doing? I mean, he's probably home for the holidays in uh, Finland, Finney, yeah, Finland, right? Yeah, it's probably, probably nice this time of the year. Yeah, he's probably skating on the pond somewhere in Finland. Um, he's, he's a big boy, he'd be <laughs> the ice better be solid at this point, a little early maybe for that. Um, all right, that's your RSM. That's okay. more than we need to do on the RSM. Go ahead. You know who might be the new Burley boys? Uh, Texas? Who? Who? University of Texas. Yeah. They might be taking the Burley boy crown. Well, I guess on they Instagram, they, some... they, they recruited a couple big boys. And they already got big that's Tom Morrison. Boy. Oh, wow. They're, I mean, this is Red River off... rivalry right here. Yeah. Taking it from Oklahoma? They got off the bus, heft, <laughs> coming to Austin. I was all right. I was I was messaging with uh, someone close to the program. They informed me that neither of their new recruits has less than a forty inch waist. <laughs> I love that. Just absolute. Burl and sturdiness in that Texas wind. Just plant your flag in the ground. There's your college All golf right. minute. Love that. RSM Classic. Let's get the hell out of here on that. Uh, elsewhere, we have the uh, the LPGA season ending uh, CME Group Tour Championship. Top 60 in the world. The purse is $11 million. $4 million to the winner, which is about the equivalent of what uh, Nelly's made in seven win seasons. So that gives you an idea of how sort of disproportionate the payout is this week and maybe uh, small in, in events that should have more. Uh, so the $4 million to the winner. Uh, I found a funny article on golfchannel.com 
And they said something to the effect of, uh, interestingly enough, everyone starts at zero. <laughs> like, this is interesting. No, no, this is just the yeah. way golf is. Oh, my God, it's a 72-hole event. Where there's no say, it said interesting about this one is everybody starts at zero. So, you know, 60th uh, ranked woman could win $4 million in the race to the CME, a hefty payout. But that is your season. They've ending. deemed they've deemed everybody there deserves to be in the field. Yep. And they let them play for a, pri- a big prize fund. That's nice. Yep. That's great. Uh, this is at the Tiburon Golf Club, as is custom, become custom in Naples, Florida. We'll see if the, uh, the adjacent course is open. Isn't that one where guys are doinking it off the houses as they're trying to play on the Tiburon Golf Course in Naples for, for public play? Uh, defending champ is Amy Yang. Notables. Do you think Lauren, they have the other course shut down? I, I mean, I just, I don't think so. Should we Does, check? It? Hey, PJ, can you check golf now? I only have one hand. See if you can book golf a tea now. Time. What's the name of the course? It's uh, it's just it's just search Tiburon Tea Times. Okay, right. it's the, there's the black course which was remastered by Greg Norman, Re, not renovated or <laughs> not restored re- or reimagined or redesigned, remastered. Uh, all right, notables: Lauren Coughlin, uh, Hannah Green, Brooke Henderson, Jin Young Ko, Lydia Ko, Nelly Corda. I run Rue, Lilia Vu, Gino Titicool, Ronnie Yin. I mean, everybody's here. It's the top 60. This is on uh, <clears throat> Golf Channel on Thursday and Friday from 3 to 5. 4 to 7 on Golf Channel on tape delay, which is just no bueno for Saturday. And 1 to 4 on NBC. So we're going to network for the Sunday finish on NBC. If, what do we got, PJ? If you want to play the black course, it's open all week. <laughs> How much? Uh, if you want to go off at eight ten a.m. tomorrow, three hundred and forty four dollars. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! What about during like Thursday or Friday play? Uh, let's see. Is it all three Friday Friday afternoon? Sound good to you? Uh, Twilight starting at three p.m. One seventy nine. Three p.m. How many holes are you getting in at three p.m.? What time to get dark in Naples? Can you look $200? that up? dollars. Two hundred dollars. Sunset. <laughs> Uh, five thirty. Five thirty. You get two and a half hours oh. at three. Your boys from across the pond. We get eighteen, barring nobody in front of them. I, I bet. So. I don't think they could get around that course. And <laughs> so, if you want to, if you want to budget four, four hours, the earliest tea time on Friday afternoon currently is one thirty for the low, low price of three hundred and thirty-five dollars. Uh, different world out there. So those are your notables. That are they on get- golf now? Is that how you book it? Uh, no, I just went to their website, but I can uh, check if there are any hot to, deals. I bet you could get <laughs> some deal. hot deals. <laughs> Let me look hot that up. Deals. What is, what does that mean? Like a free soda and a hot dog? You know what it means? It means that it's, golf it's now dynamic has, pricing. Well, they also do this deal where they get tea times from courses and then they can charge whatever they want with the tea time yep. because it's theirs. Which undercuts the the price. Yep. More expensive on golf now for the same one thirty tea time. Oh wow! A little there service fee we in just, there. We just learned of a little uh, market inefficiency there. How about that? No, no podcast is going from Laura Quinn's split jersey to trying to bust up golf now monopoly on tea times better than this one. Um, all right. Uh, continuing on with our schedule for the week, last event, the DP World Tour, the Australia Asian Tour, the BMW Australian PGA Championship at Royal Queensland Golf Club in Brisbane. Defending champ is Min Woo Lee, even as he teeters on the outside of the signature event cut line. Makes sense for him to go home. Uh, notables, Cam Davis, Jason Day, going home. Sort of turned his back on uh, uh, turned his back on going home to a lot of... Uh, for. I was giving you so much time. I was just stumbling along trying to let you get the button. That's his reason for celebration. Dayman going home. Re-embracing his roots after turning, never going home for these uh, primo Australian events during this time of year. Minwoo Lee, Leishman Ogilvy playing. Victor Perez, the Frenchman, and Cam Smith, who's been bouncing around playing like local regional championships there the last few weeks. Sounds like he's having a blast 
doing that. Um, this will be on Golf Channel, 9.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. Wednesday through Saturday. So cocktail golf uh, on the East Coast. Watch a little golf from Australia here in the United States. Uh, last but not least, there's the Link Hong Kong Open that's on in the middle of the night on Golf Channel. I'm not even sure what that is necessarily, but it's listed here on TV and Golf Channel. Oh, and we also have the match. The celebrity match, which is oh. taped and been banked. <laughs> you don't look excited about that one. I think that's the next two days or Wednesday, Thursday. That's clearly, that's been taped and banked. Someone sent us a bunch of intel from their course. I don't have it handy where it was taped uh, with, you know, Wayne Gretzky and Ken Griffey Jr. And I forget other, other celebrities. Bill Murray, I believe, is in there. That's the match on uh, TNT, I believe, the next couple of days this week. Um, that's your schedule for the week. Wow. Hour plus pod. Let's get out of here. I'm not even going to do news. We did news. Talk to you guys on Friday.